Able to On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont. Good morning, welcome to Green Mountain Support okay. Services. Um, this is our, our brand new building, and as you come in, this is the lobby. We've got some brochures over here and some awards on the wall. And these, everybody's in a different position here. Supportive employment section, meaning um, everybody has a job. Uh, that's the, the group that works with folks that have jobs in the community and they work to try to find them jobs in the community mm -hmm. by reaching out to businesses and forming them. Anybody, them. anybody with a special need has a job here? Uh, yes, anyone that we work with. that kind of helps them reach out and make acquaintances with businesses in the community. It's a big far cry from years ago. Oh, absolutely. As far as being institutionalized. And... This section is our AFC program. Okay, hello. Hello. Would you like to say something for the camera? Something for the camera? Yes. <laughs> no, um, as far as what you do for Green Mountain Support Service, what is your name, please? Danielle Boise. And um, what do you do again for Green I'm Mountain? I'm a service coordinator for the AFC program. And what exactly is the AFC program? The Adult Family Care Program. Mm -hmm. um, so people that are in the nursing homes, and we put them in, in homes in the community. Okay. So it's basically being integrated and being independent yeah. in the community. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, everybody needs a kitchen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is um, the Roberts Room. This is our largest conference room. Last year, so this is a brand new Where space. Were you guys for us. We were on Professional Drive, in a much smaller place. Oh, very much smaller. Yeah, I, is, I, I can tell. This has been amazing. This is pretty much new. It smells new. <laughs> no, it does pretty much. If it's kept, if it's kept neat and clean and mm -hmm. things like that, and it smells new. Oh, it does. This um, um, I'm getting your sign. Wait, is this the donor? Wait, no, no. this is dedicated service. So anything with a, with a, with a house on it is our shared living providers? Mm. And anything without a house? 
as our employees. So this is how many people that have been working with us for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years. Wow. Yeah. You guys been there, and so you guys, 25 years of? Uh, we've, been, we've been working for over 30 years. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Okay. And then we're back, we're back in the lobby. Mm. Back in the lobby. Like I said, this smells new. Sink, fridge. Yeah. Julie's office uh, here. Master, Master Chef Microwave. Master <laughs> Chef Microwave, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Is Don't get rid of that. Well, <laughs> we're not going to get rid of it, but we're going to turn it into drop in workspace for staff who might be working in the area who just need a place to pop in for a little bit. Oh, you mean like a, one of the pop up offices? Yeah, yeah. This will become a training room and an open meeting room. We're going to Try to pop out that partition wall. Makes the real space for an apartment. Uh, yes. <laughs> and this is our larger private conference room. Mountain Support Services for almost eight years doing case management. Um, we serve individuals with developmental disabilities. We um, assist them with finding homes that the individual needs to live in. We do monthly home visits to make sure everything's going well. We help to coordinate medical services, um, help with Social Security paperwork, Medicaid paperwork, setting up medical appointments, maybe finding transportation to the appointments if needed, and um, basically any type of services that people need assistance with. And we help to find as many natural supports as we can and help the person to have a, um, a high quality of life outside of the agency on their own. Okay, and um, and Josh has got that up there too. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm looking at this specifically. Yep. Code of ethics. Yep. So the computer lab is for staff, right? Uh, no. Uh, it, it, anyone can come in. Uh, the, or the folks we support can come in and use it. Um, their, their direct support providers can come in and use the computers. Mm. Come get the shot of. I will. Hold on. So, so what exactly is this? Why do they call it a wheel pad? It's it basically it's a a portable addition to a home for someone that has um, some that needs some accessibility. Oh, I mean, see, the, the, this is like. So this is a house. It's a, it's it's a bedroom. It's really? a bedroom and a bathroom. So if you have if you if you're in need of getting an extra bedroom in your home for someone that needs some that has some accessibility issues, this is probably the best. The, the so they would be option. sleeping outside. No, what they would do is that it depends. It depends on the home. It depends on uh, how it would be attached to a home. You would attach this as to a home. 
and it's all it's it's all ADA accessible. It's even more than ADA accessible. It's bariatrically accessible. So the ramp here is just for the model, so people can come Lilla, and look at it. Yeah, I'm trying to get you explaining this stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. And whoa. Okay. So inside here, you have it's a bedroom. Somebody actually sleeps here now. No, no, no. This is just a model. This is just for people to see because uh, they're, the, the, uh, the wheel pad, they're based out of Wilmington, Vermont. Mm. So this is the only model available for people to come and look at in all of northern Vermont this is right very now. Interesting. And so what it is, is it's, it's, it's made for like, you know, even like bariatrically. Bariatric um, means what? Um, you know, people that have like our, um, who are past ADA accessibility, that, that are need more than ADA accessibility. For example, people that are, you know, that are uh, morbidly home. obese or more, you know, people that can't move or can't do anything anymore because you have the, the railing, the track system installed as well on here. So this is the bathroom. So the track does what? It uh, it's for someone that might need a lift that needs to go from the bedroom to to the bathroom. This is like Biggest Loser stuff right here. Yeah. So this is all, and this is all set up. Wow. Um, and next time you have to show my wife this stuff because this is interesting. Yeah, it's all made for being able to make a a, a room completely accessible. For anyone, and what they would do is that what what Wheelpad do, does is they work with the individual zoning commissions in different towns to figure out how they would attach this to a house. You need to show this to people. Who? Oh. Yeah. This is this. So what I'll do, Larry, is I'll get you hooked up with the people that make these. They're based out of Southern Vermont. They sell a lot of these. They Yeah, maybe. Um, Sell and they what they do is they sell a lot of these in like southern Vermont, Massachusetts, New York State, but they're looking at trying to do this all over the world. Well, the, the, world. The, well they do, but they don't. There's not a lot in northern Vermont, so this is why we're we're partnering with them so that they can keep this and uh, they can have a model so people can come and look at it. Wow, this is just um, really really accessible. Yeah, I've never seen this. Before. Right, and the thing is, they're built. They 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 built it, and they just you just drive it, and and they just they, they build them down in their in their shop, and then it's on a trailer. So they a just house drive on it. wheels. They just drive it straight to the first. So it's just a bedroom and a bathroom. That's just it. Just a bedroom and a bathroom. Yep. And it's because it's made to make sure that the, that the that the person is still a part of the home. No, but what if so? Being able to have this opportunity to. You know, have their own bedroom space, have their own bathroom, but still be a part of the household is is extremely important. So. Yes, yeah, and, and this is new because the smell is clean too. Yeah. Yeah, this is just excellent. Yeah. How long you guys have the um? How long have you guys had the partnership? We've uh, we they they dropped us off in early earlier this earlier this month. So we've had this here now for about a month or so, and we're hoping to keep it here as long as they need. Need. Um, you have one at the other space too, or no? No, no. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we're. I think what the, the mission of what Wheelpad does is very much in line with what Greenmount Support Services believes, and that is that you know, everybody has the opportunity and deserves to be a part of a community and be a part of you know, uh, and be a part of something bigger than themselves so being able to have help support their wheelpads mission of of accessibility and inclusive and, and inclusion um, speaks to us as well so well, I love the fact that it's just a bedroom and a bathroom and I love the fact that you attach it to a home instead of being something that's completely separate from it's um, uh uh, so I helped put together a comic book series. We reached out to multiple different um, authors, um, script writers, um, and artists. Um, we brought them in and did interviews with five different clients, I believe, um, that have cerebral palsy. Every so do I, by the way. 
Um, and so every interview was completely different. Um, some people had already written up a script and just wanted to read us their story. Other people, uh, we helped move along and ask questions and figure out what they wanted their story to be about. Um, so we have some that was just like a day-to-day -day life of what they live. Um, another story is about how they found their new home provider and what their t um, favorite interests are. Um, we had another one who um, told us more about her childhood and what it was like being in an institute um, as far as now living in a home with her shared living provider who she has a very tight connection with. Um, so then um, we put together notes and these artists took them back and started the process doing multiple different drafts um, and every single time I would give it to um, the the person that we interviewed that had the cerebral palsy, um, they would approve it. Some people wanted to make it changed. It didn't look like they wanted it to. Um, we worked very tightly back and forth, and then we got the final. You know, like a superhero type of thing. Yeah, some of them want to be seen as a superhero. Other people want to be drawn in their wheelchair and you know shown their day to day life and. Yeah, it was a pretty cool, interesting uh, experience. So this is not. These are independent. Artists. Uh, yes. Yes, and each person had their own. So no, no one artist did two stories on the same person. Mm -hmm. so. How long did the process take? Uh, the process, I think it was probably six months. I think we did the interviews in November, and they had to have everything turned into us by April. Mm -hmm. Um, and now we're just in the final touches of getting everything put together the comic book and the comic and book published. Are you guys going to market the comic book or is this just a... I honestly don't know the answer to that. That'd be a Josh question. But I believe that we will have copies for sale here at the office. And then from here, we're moving forward even. We're um, in the process of getting our second comic book going. Uh -huh. uh, the second book going uh, that will be about direct support personnels. Um, so we plan on doing multiple of all the different branches and categories and interest and things within the agency. Okay. Um, do the comic book artists also, are they teaching art to the individuals with special needs? Or no, they did nothing with the art. Um, so like I sent back uh, typed up notes and like this is the first draft of one and so she just wrote out page one with the different panels and then the second copy was yep yeah, the Film second paper. Wow. the second yeah I just wanted to kind of show no, you just, so then the second draft mm -hmm. was um, like bubble pictures very very rough drawing art um, and then they kind of read the panel with the picture and then the next draft was more of a finalized and um, yeah. Mm. Hey, um, tell me a little bit about more of what you do here. Uh, so my role isn't really um, to do with the comics as much. Um, I work at the front desk. I'm an administrative assistant, um, so that's how I got buddied up with doing this part of it. Um, but I'm also a shared living provider coordinator, mm -hmm. uh, meaning I help clients find new homes and I bring in new shared living providers for our I clients. I just had a big conversation. Yeah, so Janine does the opposite end of what I do. She finds the clients, I find the homes. Mm -hmm. how, how has been your experience working here? Well, I have a really fun job here. I get to uh, work with our service coordination team quite a bit, helping them ensure that their support plans are respectful, are person-centered, uh, comply with regulations, of course, um, but are really driven toward helping people achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. So I help a lot. And those goals mm -hmm. are? Uh, well, that depends upon the individual. Explain. Explain? Sure. Well, we provide personalized services to people. We don't provide a one-size-fits-all package of supports here. So when people come to us, they come and with various needs and various desires. So a big part of what we need to do is identify what it is that they want to achieve in their lives and then work with them to find 
um, methods, approaches, and strategies to help them achieve those goals. When you say one size fits all, mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, so for example, care packages, mm -hmm. okay, How, why isn't it a one size fits all mm -hmm. package in this mm -hmm. case in terms of disability? Sure, well, you know, every person on this planet is unique and that's as true for people with disabilities, with different abilities, as it is for anybody else. So um, a one-size-fits-all package doesn't work for fo the folks we serve any more than it would for anybody else. Explain to me, because I'm really interested in um, the um, shared living provider mm -hmm. program yeah. through Green Mountain Support Services. So explain a little bit more about that um, program within mm -hmm. your agency. Sure. So, um, w would you like me to start with what it is? Yeah. Sure. Uh, in, your, in your opinion, what mm -hmm. is it? How does it work? Yeah. The ins and outs? Sure. So, a frame of reference that's often helpful for people who haven't heard of it is the foster care model for children um, because most people have some familiarity with that. When children, you know, can't live with their families for one reason or another, we seek to find an alternative family style situation for them that can help support them and keep them safe and, and meet their goals. So that's a starting point. By and large, however, we serve adults, but we serve adults who in many cases need some additional supports to be able to live on their own or, or perhaps people who just can't live on their own due to the level of support that they need. So we use this community-based model called the shared living provider model. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we seek to find a good match between each individual who comes to us for services and needs that level of support, and people in the community, hopefully of their choosing. You know, we, we used to institutionalize people with developmental disabilities. And Brandon State School, right. and other, other, other institutions like Willowbrook, right. and New York, and That's so right. So, so we've closed those, and we, we're now trying to build lives that are more authentic, that are truly community-based. So. Today, you know, folks might have, I think we think of our seniors, right? Because we still institutionalize some of our seniors in nursing homes. Yeah. With the exception, well, certain religious, like Asian communities, mm -hmm. Jewish communities, mm -hmm. Spanish communities, mm -hmm. um, or Latino communities, they try to keep their people at home mm -hmm. versus nursing home. Yeah. Yeah, we can't generalize. You're right. The cultural background of the people we support is really important because it affects what they're accustomed to, what they expect, what they hope for, mm -hmm. um, and what their families might be prepared to do to support them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. So the shared living provider model, you know, in essence, when somebody comes to us and they need some help, they can't live on their own, we seek to match them with someone. It could be an individual, it could be a couple, it could be a family, but someone who is a good match for them, personality-wise, activity level-wise, geography matters. Um, people want to, in many cases, continue going to their church, synagogue, or mosque, or their hairdresser that they're familiar with, or their favorite cinema. So we seek to find matches for people that enable them to keep living lives independently. Or like old movies or... Right, right. You know, somebody who wants the hustle and bustle of city life doesn't want to be living out in the country. So these are the kinds of questions we ask, you know, do you like animals? Are you afraid of dogs? We need to know these things in order to find that good match. And the good match, that's the magic sauce. That's you, where it's all at. Yeah, do you eat kosher food or that type of thing? Absolutely. Um, in your opinion, what happens if a person is not a good match? Mm. Like, how long does it take mm -hmm. to find a match? Mm -hmm. or like, and what if, if, if it's an emergency, mm -hmm. like if a person is about to be homeless? Mm -hmm. In your opinion, how does that work within all of it? Yeah, so, so it's tricky. We want to get the match right. And sometimes it can take longer than others to find that right match. We don't always get it right the first time. Um, there are some emergency circumstances like the one you ask about where we don't have that right match ready. So we might try to go with a, a, I hesitate to call it, but a good enough for now match. What's the safest and best thing we can offer a person in the moment while we seek to build something better that more truly matches their needs? What, what do you mean like a, a good for now match? Mm -hmm. 
So if we have an individual who's, who's going to be homeless for one reason or another, mm -hmm. who, you know, who isn't going to have a place to stay the night after next, um, we may not be able to identify their dream home in 24 or 48 hours. So what we'll because do... Because living... Go ahead. I'll give you an example. State of Vermont, no economic services. Mm -hmm. um, during the winter, mm -hmm. um, I know my wife and I experienced this at one mm -hmm. time or another, they give you a, a motel mm -hmm. for tw 28 days mm -hmm. or ha uh, uh, a month mm -hmm. to give you enough time to find mm -hmm. a park. So that's my point. If the match is good, for, good enough for now, it's not, because you, know, you don't want it, a person, with, especially a person with a special need, you don't want them in um, a situation where, excuse me, cold weather, snow. Of course not. They don't need to be outside. Right. Right. So what do you do in that case? Right. So we have a network of shared living providers that we work with. We also have a network of employees. And, um, and we just, you know, it's all hands on deck if we have an emergency circumstance like that with somebody who, who is extra vulnerable, who, who cannot, you know, who can't fend for him or herself and who needs some support. We would, we just dig down until we figure it out. Okay. Um, anything else particular you want to talk about the, um, shadow we provide us, like, um, anything that we've missed so far? No, I'd say, you know, they have a really special role in the Vermont Developmental Services um, structure, if you will. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity for Vermonters to help um, support other Vermonters with disabilities. And it's a very enriching experience. And I think we need to do a better job as provider agencies of teaching our neighbors uh, about those opportunities because we all benefit when we can grow that network of skilled shared living providers. What, uh, now what makes the shared living providers different, mm -hmm. especially in Vermont, versus a group home setting? Mm -hmm. Sure, so a group home setting is about the home and the structure and the system set up to operate a group home. The shared living provider model is really about people living real lives in their own home. And what we're asking folks to do is open up their doors and make space, not just in their homes, but in their lives for a new person. Um, you know, to integrate another person into their family life, not just sharing what they do and what they have, but also allowing the other person to share what they bring to the, to the family dynamic as well. Um, how long has the shared living provider model been in Vermont, or do you know that? You know, I can't give you a year for that, but I, but I can tell you for sure that the closing of the Brandon Training School was a, a really pivotal time in the, yeah, in the yeah, in the development of the current adult services model for Vermont. Why was uh, Vermont Support Services uh, nominated as mm -hmm. the best place to work? You know, we were so proud of that because it was the employees who nominated us um, as the best places to work site. And then when we won, we felt really gratified. Um, GMS has got an extraordinary benefits package. We think it's the best in the state of Vermont. And the workplace culture is really unique and quite special. We've got benefits such as unlimited paid time off for many of our staff. You think about that, that's extraordinary. You know, um, folks can accommodate family needs and extended trips um, without feeling like they're going to be in trouble at work. Oh, you mean like taking extended vacation? Folks can, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we have someone who's getting married this fall, and she's going to take an extended trip with her new husband, and she can do that, and she wouldn't have been able to do that in previous jobs, and she's, she's thrilled. But she's a great worker, and she is just on top of everything, and we're so happy to be able to support um, her that way. Speaking of which, um, you know, because they, they passed – Family Leave yeah. Act and all this other. My question is, like mm -hmm. in the field of disabilities, mm -hmm. how can I put this? Um, how can I put it in the, in the best way? <laughs> we can always edit it. But in the field of disabilities, I know the same thing as being a chef. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have a set time off or mm -hmm. set money to, but 
Let's say if an employee in the field with disabilities, maybe with your agency, mm -hmm. is pregnant, mm -hmm. do, does the package allow maternity leave and how does that work within, mm -hmm. within the field, not necessarily your agency, but mm -hmm. across the board, people with disabilities? Because it is customer service and you have to be back to work. And, yep. You know, Yep. Well, you know, our agency is bound like any other employer to honor all the laws and regulations around extended family leave, and we certainly do that. But we, we go above and beyond um, with some of our employees, for example, new moms or new grandmothers, and it could extend to fathers and grandfathers as well. Um, just so far, women are taking, care, uh, taking advantage of it. Um, they can bring babies to work. I did that myself. My, both my kids came to work with me, and that was, you know, 15 years ago. Um, you take your kid to work day? Right. No, I took my kids to work every day. Yeah, and we have we have a we usually have one or two office babies the first year of life who are in the office pretty regularly. And um it's a really nice benefit for our employees because they don't have to worry about finding childcare, which as we all know in Vermont is really hard to find high quality oh, childcare. It? Is it hard? It's really hard to find high quality childcare and it's also there's an affordability gap too. It's expensive. So when we have new moms who know that they can bring their baby to work for you know that first year um, and they're supported to take care of that child, it takes a huge amount of stress off the employees and really um, fuels their productivity, fuels their happiness, fuels their affection for the agency, which benefits all of us. Good. Okay. I am currently a service coordinator and I am um, running the Flexible Choices Program. Explain more about the Flexible Choices Program. Flexible Choices Program um, is a wonderful program. It, it allows people to stay in their home um, instead of going into a nursing home. So basically people apply for the long-term Medicaid, which is Choices for Care, and they get to choose what services they want. Um, it could be laundry, cooking, respite, companionship, doing errands for people. Employment. And yeah, yeah, it, it does basically everything. The only thing we're not offering right now is the nursing piece of it. What do you mean nursing piece? Um, the nursing of coming in and doing skilled nursing like a nursing home would do um, or home health would do. We're not offering that service, but we are, it's, it's really great. The referrals have been coming in like crazy. I actually just left. Um, I went and met with Community Connections in, at NVRH and sat down and told them about our programs and gave them our referral forms and um, the process. And then I just went and met with um, St. Johnsbury Health Center, where I actually used to work, and went down and talked to them. They actually had a couple of cases they wanted to review with me to see if that would be a good match for them. Um, yeah. Um, how long have you been working? Here, two Almost on two months. Um, besides, okay, you, you've worked in nursing before? No, I am not a nurse. I'm actually a clinical social worker. I've worked um, at various places before. Um, previous to this, I worked in the healthcare. I worked at primary care office. I was a chronic care coordinator, and um, we would coordinate services, um, either mental health, social social aspects, um, a lot of social determinants, the ACEs, um, screening them for things if they were lack of housing, food, not just the medical piece. Okay. Um, what makes the model, Choices for Care, and all, and all the, um, you know, the living providers, what makes that a better model than being just in a group home? It's individualized. They get to choose what they want. They get to have their own choices. Um, they get to have a say in their care instead of just being stuck somewhere and having to stay there. They get to choose what they want and their goals and their quality of life, um, which would be like the AFC program, adult family care, going into someone's home. They have a say in that and they're part of the process of that. Flexible choices, same thing. You know, if they're eligible for flexible choices and there's the money's piece, they get to choose what they want. We don't choose that for them. So whether, like I said, whether it's laundry or someone mowing their lawn or someone just visiting with them for a few hours or taking them to doctor's appointments or getting, bringing them to bingo, 
um, they get to choose what they want. And that's what's so wonderful about our programs is that it's individualized. It's person-centered. Okay. Anything else you want to say? No. Okay. Very good then. Thanks. Ableton On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont.